Good morning. Uh, my name is Chris Rogers. I'm the CEO of Scientech. Um, so if you've been watching any of our videos, we've been talking about various things and showing some, some, of, our, some of our products. I think one of the, the very important things at the moment, and uh, I speak to you on the Friday of the eve of uh, one of our largest coal fronts and potentially also uh, some, some load shedding. Uh, we've had load reduction. We're now talking about load shedding. Um, we have unscheduled maintenance, we have scheduled maintenance. Whatever you like to call it, the reality for me as a consumer is I have no power. It's a power outage. However you subcategorize it, it's a problem for me because I like to be able to do things I like to do normally and in fact the sorts of things I have to do. So under the current circumstances a lot of us are working from home, as am I at the moment. Um, and in fact I'm in my own workshop uh, where I have a backup system. And so that's what I want to talk about today is, is how, do we, how do we back up uh, the, the Eskom grid. The way we do this, you've probably heard the term UPS or uninterrupted power supply uh, or inverter. Um, so that's, that is the, the mechanisms that we, the two mechanisms that we use. Effectively a UPS has an inverter inside it. Um, this right here is one of our smallest UPSs. This is a 1 kVA UPS that has batteries internally. Uh, not a particularly powerful box, but it's used essentially to back up your PC um, or something small, and it will give you a very short runtime, probably about 15 minutes, which gives you enough time to save your work and also to uh, to, to to safely shut down. So that's that's what a UPS does. It uh, sits in line and it literally constantly provides power to the device um, so if there is any outage the device doesn't see it until the battery runs flat. Um, this is actually, well that's a fairly small device, this is a, our smallest offering in terms of power backup. This is what we call a DC to DC UPS. So it has multiple of the normal round connectors on the back, uh, 12 volt or 9 volt. Um, it charges off the mains. Um, it also charges off solar, so if you're out in the bush, you can plug in a solar panel, you see about 100 watts, um, and then you have your 12 volt stroke 9 volt outputs. You also have a USB output, um, which allows you to charge things like, like cell phones. It has four uh, uh, lithium-ion batteries inside, um, which uh, provide the backup, and it's, it's a really, really robust little device. I've, I've run crazy things off this uh, 12 volt devices um, and yeah it's certainly something sub 1000 rand products are pretty cool um, <clears throat> this is our 60 amp hour battery no I'm not that strong this is <laughs> this is a, an empty case um, so this is a 60 amp hour battery um, I have the slightly larger size in my system identical battery I have the OPR 120s and if you look down the bottom here You'll see there in this cabinet, I've got the lid off. Um, you can probably see some of the links. But there's eight batteries in here, which is effectively the storage of the system. Um, this is an eight uh, kilowatt inverter. Uh, it's an older inverter. As you can see, they're a little bit smaller today. Um, but it's a very good product, very robust. Um, been here for some time. And this then connects through to my essential loads. So if you if you uh, look on the screen right now, you'll see what this is doing right now. You'll see uh, on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see that there's uh, the Eskom grid there, and then it flows through to the inverter, and from the inverter uh, down to the batteries, and across to the essential loads, and then the non-essential loads as well. So in this instance here, um, if you look back at, at this system, um, it comes back into the switch box here, so you can switch it to inverter, off, or onto mains. So if you had a problem with the inverter, you would switch this to just to pure mains. Uh, probably fairly un unlikely. And then it goes up into the switch group here, and then off to all the plugs in my house. So I run that off, uh, off that system I run. Um, my microwave, my fridges, TV, decoder, hi-fi, 
pretty much it's almost seamless uh, when we have a power failure um, and uh, I get about six hours of runtime uh, of that, of that system. That's what I've seen so far. I haven't pushed it further than that. So it's a, that's the simple basics of the system. Uh, if you look onto the screen again, you will see that uh, when the grid fails, the power flows up from the battery into the inverter and then out to the essential loads. Um, and so and that happens in 15 milliseconds typically. So it's completely seamless. Your DSTV doesn't even reboot. It doesn't, so you do not know it's happened. Um, quite eerie sometimes when, when you get up and you look around you and you see all the other houses are out and you've still got lights because we, we tend to use lamps for lighting in the house. Um, and you haven't even seen a blip on the TV or anything. So it's, it's a completely silent and fast switchover. So you're not going and starting generators with smoke and noise and whatnot. It's completely transparent. So pretty neat thing, I think. The really essential thing, uh, particularly now, I think we're, we're, in a, we're in a time where, unfortunately, uh, we're seeing crime increase. Um, and I think it's, it's a lot of it's out of desperation, uh, which means that we need to be much more vigilant about security. Um, garage doors work on electricity. Electric fences work on electricity. Pretty much a lot of our security, the cameras work on electricity, is dependent uh, on continuity of, of supply. So I think that's a very important thing as well from a lifestyle perspective, something we would like to have not in our lifestyle, but it's a reality. Um, so so the, 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 my, my entire alarm system, um, uh, the, the access control of the house, etc., is controlled uh, even when there is uh, when there is no power. Um, in terms of batteries, there obviously everybody is pretty excited about lithium iron. There's some fears about uh, lithium iron being volatile. Um, in fact, the lithium iron batteries that we use uh, in a in a domestic or a, or a, a um, business perspective are extremely, extremely safe. Um, unlike some of the batteries you've heard, and we've all heard, heard these horror stories on the Boeing 787, it's completely different lithium ion technology. We use a lithium phosphate, lithium, lithium iron, as in the metal iron phosphate battery, uh, which is very, very, very safe. Um, so which when you use some kind of an oxide with the lithium, that you have um, essentially a a risky scenario with thermal runaways. So there is very little issue with the lithium ion batteries that we use um, in terms of, of safety. In terms of uh, what a lithium ion battery offers, there's some amazing things. So it gives you much more cycle life and the number of times you can charge and discharge a lithium ion battery is literally about five times what you can do with a, a lead acid battery. So, uh, and, and possibly even more. Uh, the level to which you can discharge the battery, so typically with a, an AGM gel, which is a good lead acid battery, you wouldn't discharge it more than about 50%. With lithium, you can discharge to 80 or 90%. So it means you can use more of the battery. Uh, so that's a great advantage. Lithium is one third the weight of a lead acid battery. I've carried a few around and thrown my back out, so not a great, <laughs> great idea for someone my age. Um, so that's a, a big advantage, um, is, is the weight as well as the footprint. So the footprint is a lot smaller as well. Also, about uses about 30% of the space of, of what, uh, what lead uses. However, <laughs> of course, uh, as great as it, as it is, um, with all of these aspects, the other great aspect about it is the recharge time. So if you have an outage and the batteries have, let's say you've discharged them 80-90%, they will recharge in literally a couple of hours, so you know, maybe two, three hours they'll be recharged. Whereas the lead battery is going to take a lot longer, six, seven hours to recharge. So lithium has a, a myriad of benefits and I, I do think in future there will hardly be any lead left and we'll have predominantly predominantly uh, lithium batteries. However, it's still three times the price. 
so now you have to do the sums. If I'm getting five times the cycles and it's three times the price, well now it's starting to get to, okay, do I want to be replacing my batteries every three years, for example, in a, in a lead acid battery or two to three years, or do I want to do it every eight to ten years? So it's a, it's a calculation that you have to do and, and apply for yourself, but certainly we are big proponents of uh, lithium technology, although uh, we sell a lot of lead batteries still because they are relatively inexpensive, they do the job quite well, um, and people know and trust them. So lead is, has still got a, a place in the market, um, but certainly I think in future we'll see that, uh, that lead is, is, um, uh, is going to become less and less, uh, pretty much like coal is becoming less and less. Uh, the whole world is changing in terms of the way um, that we make, uh, we make electricity. So the difficulty is knowing exactly what you need. And this is what we see with customers, they don't know what they need. So typically in a, in a regular size house you'll need about a 3 to 5 kilowatt backup system. Um, the, the storage uh, is defined by the batteries and the 3 to 5 kilowatt inverter uh, basically means how much load it can provide or can support at any, at any given moment in time. Um, but I'm sure you all want to become electrical engineers and certainly I'm not one. Um, but there's a very simple calculator on our, on our um, uh, website, which is scientechstore.co.za. What you'll also find there is uh, pre-configured kits with all the cables, lugs, connectors, the whole kit, which you can buy and get an installer. We can appoint an installer for you to install one uh, in your home. Um, and these systems typically come with, uh, with five-year warranty on the, on the inverter, Depending on the batteries, if you go for uh, lead acid, it's usually a year. Um, the lithium is five years, so lithium obviously more, more expensive, but a nice option. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of other stuff on the store that you can browse around if you're not in the market for, for something as uh, integrated and uh, permanent as this is. Then you could use something like the PowerX, which there is another video that I've done in an earlier series talks about the power which is effectively this functionality uh, scaled down and in a, a semi-portable mode. So take a look and uh, thank you for watching.